So, Across the Spider-Verse. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. This movie has been an interesting development, to say the least. You know, as much as I want to tear this movie to shreds, as much as I want to call it a liberal, ideological circle jerk, I personally don't have a single problem with this movie. I'm not going to lie to you. This movie was almost one-to-one perfection in its finest. Like, there are themes where people want to be able to nitpick, but really they're not nitpicks. One I could think of is when he was talking to his mother, the protagonist, Miles. And she's like, oh, people won't always root for you the way we will and things of that nature. And you could actually interpret that in so many different ways without actually going to the negative winds of it all. You know, like, literally, you could interpret it as either Miles' mother already knows that he's Spider-Man or that, yeah, at the end of the day, you're going to go out into the world as a young man and not everyone will root for you, especially given your race. And it doesn't have to be a big deal. They're not shoving it in our face. That's what I want to see. That's how you do this type of storytelling with these type of minorities without it feeling forced. You know, I can't exactly put my finger on it, but for some reason, this movie is very subtle with how they go about explaining Miles' theme, you know, doing his own thing, being his own person, truly embodying the fact that anyone can wear the mask. I think it's even better than I would say the Spider-Verse movie that we are introducing Miles before this one came out. I think this one is a lot better with how they did it. Personally, they're not just slapping Jordans on Spider-Man and being like, yeah, Black Spidey right here. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's good. It's done to a, a degree to where anyone can enjoy. And so honestly, I'm not mad at this movie. Honestly, I'm really not. I think the characters are very much interesting. I do think the random voice swapping of Spider-Woman makes no sense. Like, I, like, this is one of the things where it's like, come on, at the end of the day, it's still modern entertainment. There's still going to be a little bit unnecessarily racially motivated for whatever reason. But this one is just one of the ones that actually just make no sense to me. Like, with all these minorities you have on screen, like, there's no real need to force one or to make something that wasn't, you know? So that's the one that's just a little annoying. And you could argue, oh, it's not in the same universe as when the comics, and that's fine. But we know what these characters are supposed to look like. And they decided to use one of the most random iterations of Spider-Woman, the one that's pregnant, which makes no sense. The parenting aspect of this movie is probably one of the few things I can actually critique when it comes to the representation of parents who are super in this movie. It's like, yeah, you're a superhero, but it doesn't mean you have to throw yourself into the fray with your baby in tow. Like, it's so weird. Like, both Spider-Woman and Peter does this. Our Peter. 616 Peter. Like, it's it's honestly, I don't get that at all. Like, it makes no sense. If anything, they would be the most protective over their children. Like, I'm pretty sure they could have just time skipped to when Jessica Drew had her baby so she could be a little more badass and so this wouldn't have to feel weird. Because to me, this just feels really weird. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not a fan of it in the slightest. But, hey, do we just around this little weird people with some weird fetishes out there? I'm not one of them, but go off i guess now obviously let's get into the actual story let's get into the characters who are more interesting than just being diversity intake so yeah let's get into spider-man 2099 this guy is literally my favorite character in this movie i do not care what anyone says he is not wrong for what he's trying to do and there can be some holes planted in his logic from why he doesn't like miles i can agree to that and i can admit that and i can concede to that but I cannot deny the appeal of this character is just there. Like from the aesthetics alone to just his motivation into why he does what he does, it's honestly done to perfection. Like I really do like the fact that animated movies are finally becoming a step above that of their live action counterparts. Because like bro, this has things that emotionally hit you one to one. And do not get me wrong, there are a few scenes that are literally live action. <laughs> and like so like what do you want me to do but at the same time for the ones that aren't which is the majority of this movie they really do clash with the best of them in the actual movie industry like and i think that this could be in conversation for movie of the year animated or otherwise like i really do enjoy this movie and i do think the (laughs) the way spot is used throughout the movie is honestly interesting because it's coming off as if like he's just this joke villain that's just there to introduce the wider spider-verse But through the process of watching this movie, you find out just how relevant he actually is in the story 
and to the relationship that he has with the characters in the story i think that's really interesting the way they do it like they link miles and spot perfectly i love the way it's laid out and when i say miles i do mean miles is okay that's right but anyway let's continue we come to find out that the spider that bit miles was originally going to bite miles from a different world earth 42 if i'm not mistaken and so it leaves that miles's earth without a spider-man because he would have been that universe's first spider-man and on top of that you see the world just in chaos it's absolutely destroyed darn near it's literally almost dystopian in nature and all of that and all of that destruction caused by one spider getting lost between the webs of the multiverse which is just interesting to me and then that spider landed in a world that already had a spider-man and on top of that had a mouse that was just ripe for the picking to become spider-man another problem i do have with the movie and i'm not gonna lie this one might be a little bit of a hot take but i'm gonna go ahead and throw it y'all way see what y'all think so essentially um the spider-verse has a canon that cannot be broken throughout the entire web of life which to me is interesting especially the way they theme it and this is where i get into the hot take of it all so essentially these spider people knowingly and are willing to let certain people die so that others may live now on the face of it yeah it's a bit more of an anti-hero spin you know some people gotta go for the greater good yada 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 but at the same time it's something that i know for a fact that it's not very spider-man like and you're telling me that these type of spider people specifically like um the spider people that we know of outside of this movie and outside of this medium i.e the movie genre i could list literally spectacular spider-man i'm sure ultimate spider-man is in there we see um unlimited spider-man in there these people would never be willing and since most of the people in the spider-verse are basically alternate versions of peter i can't really imagine these peter parkers being willing to let someone knowingly die like that just doesn't feel very spider-man you know? so a quick little editor's note when i say that these type of people wouldn't be the people to let other people die for the sake of other people it's not quite what i meant because obviously we see with spider-man ps4 we've seen that with other examples but i'm mainly referring to the very thing that made spider-man who he is you know the very life-changing and traumatic experience of oh i don't know you know letting the you know pew pewer the person who killed Uncle Ben just get away. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't sit well with most Peter Parker's consciousness. I'm, I don't know. Call me crazy. But that's just it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. You know what I mean? Like, I can understand that for like 2099 and maybe the more edgy Spider people. Like, I would have expected this coming from Spider-Man Noir. But he's on Gwen's team by the end of the movie. So to, to that, I, all I got to say is like, it's just a very interesting way to go about it. I mean, you could have found numerous different ways to tell this story, but sure. And yeah, I think I just think that's very interesting. You know, honestly, I don't feel too bold to say that this movie is quite literally a 10 out of 10 in all regards. Like personally, we get more development with a lot of characters we saw before. Okay, some more than others. Sorry, Penny Parker. We just don't get that much development with you, I guess. Unfortunately. We get the progression of Miles' story, the Miles that I've been waiting to see continue his journey for literally years now, but that's just me personally. But yeah, this was just a short little review, and really I just wanted to get my thoughts on the general movie as it stands now, uh, fresh uh, a few days after watching it the first time. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Uh, again, I am sorry for being so late. I've just been trying to figure out some things over here. You know, a lot of things been moving in a lot of different directions, a lot of things on and off camera going through. Other than that, I don't want to bore you guys with all of that. Other than that, have a great day and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace.